Hello and welcome to another episode of Just Vanning It Guys. This week we are talking about the side of caravanning that people don't see. No all blue skies and sunshine here. Let's jump straight into it. Brought to you by iCheck TPMS. All right, guys. Well, just before we start this episode, forget how are you? Yeah, a um, couple of quick things. Get a lot of questions about this clock behind on the side of me. We can't fix the the internal. So the internal part keeps moving. We get a lot of questions. Why? Why is the clock covered? That's why it's covered. I don't know why we haven't thrown it out. I don't know. It's become a talking point in our midweek episodes now. So we've left it up there. And we sort of changed the covering just to create a bit of a talking point. So we, that's what we, why the clock is covered. I've also got something. Now I go along a lot about um, carrying one of these. Because when we broke down, if I had one of these, it would have saved a lot. And you could possibly even help someone else out. So our checker sent me out. Um, a scan gauge. It's it's new to their um, store. There it is over there. Ooh. So it fits any OB2 reader. You can read codes, delete codes, and check anything to go with the vehicle. Now that fits even my cruiser. I helped a gentleman up the other day. He had um, something going wrong in his car. We plugged it in. But what our check has done is they've sent me out two. One sealed one and we are going to give away this in this episode to the best, what, what what should we do? The best comment again in this episode? Yep. And we'll run that for until next week, Tuesday, to give people time to comment. And then next week, Wednesday's episode, we'll announce the winner. And then we'll reach out to you guys and we'll post it to you because I've got this with us. Now, you've got to live in Australia. You've got to be there over the age of 18. And good luck. It's cool to have one of these color screen as well. Um, so, yeah, good luck. Drop a comment and we'll do some um, reading and pick a winner for next week. So next week, just to let you know, the competition will close on Tuesday, which will be uh, the 22nd at 3 p.m. August 2023. Don't want to get people confused because these videos stay on our YouTube. So... Good luck. Let's jump into it. So as you can see, Bob has turned a lighter shade of red, red. from the red dirt um, up where we are. Okay, let's go. So number one, and always the hot talking point with caravanning, the dirty little secret of space. There is not a lot of it. There is very limited space. We said in a previous episode, we live in 16 square meters. It's close quarters. If your partner or Bob left Fluffy off the chain, your nostrils know about it very quickly. Um, also, you know, get used to the fact that your partner might want to have a chat while you're doing your business, um, yes. you know, through the door. So if you're a person who struggles with space, and we have met some people on the road. Just recently, um, actually. Yeah, just recent. It's generally in the first couple of months, there's an adjustment period, getting used to living in a small space. But if you're the type of person who doesn't enjoy small spaces or, you know, living in very close quarters, it's going to be incredibly challenging for you. Um, it's not just in the caravan as well. Um, we travel in the car together. We obviously spend a lot of time in the van together so you have got to get used to that so you know when sue's working it's not like she goes to an office and i go to work we come home in the evening we have a chat i go and do my thing outside she you know sue does her thing you're in each other's space all the time now we met this lovely couple on the beach not so long ago just passing by and we just said good day and we told them how long we've been on the road for and they just basically just looked at us and said how do you do it because um they can't adjust to that being in each other's space all the yeah. time so it's a big adjustment now look you can 
obviously go for a walk you can exercise you can do your own thing but yeah you basically i've said it before we eat sleep and the shower has a door on it but you can understand what we're trying to say and then you can spend up to eight nine ten hours a day in a car so i'll look at sue and go talk to me she goes well about what and i'll go all oh, right yeah right oh. you know it, it, it will happen i'm afraid so it's something you need to adjust to find ways around it that works for both of you yours is the next i tell you what i do love this lifestyle and i'm going to be blatantly honest and say i'm not ready to go back to a normal life if that's the way you want to put it but this does cross my mind a lot the day that i don't have to worry about checking if the toilet cassette is full because not talking about um composting toilets talking about cassette toilets especially there's only two of us if you really want to know two and a half days to three days uh, four days sometimes four days push. at a push that if cassette i don't drink is full. a lot of tea so you're kind of got to go and get rid of it not a drama but currently where we are now I, th I think personally they do this for a reason because we're free camping um just north of broom if you if you wanted to know and there's no dump point along here so we would love to stay longer out here but because the cassette gets full it's about an hour and 20 minutes drive back into broom just to go and dump the toilet every sort of three to four days and we don't have kids and we so, actually had to do that on day two because we forgot bad to dump the toilet yes yes so when it's yes. full it's full it's full there's you, you can't, can't squeeze a little extra drop in that's there. it it's done and i'll tell you a story um another downside of the cassette is i have we this has happened to us where I've taken the cassette, I tell Sue, I'm oh, going to take the cassette in. Here we go. And this was actually on Paluby, um <laughs> almost two years ago now. And I drive into um, Streaky Bay to, to get rid of the toilet, do the shopping, come back. My fault. Didn't put the cassette straight away back in. Hurry down to the boat to go fishing. Sue thought I'd put the cassette back in and she's used the toilet. Just on the number one. But I've heard a story, <laughs> this honestly hasn't happened to us, where some parents came to visit, not quite understanding the cassette scenario, and did a number two in the toilet without the cassette in it. <laughs> so there can be some downfalls to the old toilet scenario, and then you have to clean it up. So, yeah, the day that I don't have to worry about the toilet, where it can just disappear into the <laughs> sewer system, would be a great situation to be um water's out is the next one again you only have x amount of water there have been days and there will be days if you don't have water that you go without a shower and There's, again it's the same as a toilet you got no water you got no water you got no water no extra drops yesterday was actually a day because we watch our water usage and again we know we can go about four or five days at a push on 200 liters of water on 200 liters of water um so yesterday i wasn't working so i was like don't have to shower no shower day what does that mean it means a lot of deodorant wet wipes um you know if you need to just wet a face cloth and you know <laughs> um look after the important bits you do that um but along with that you know you're wet wiping yourself you're wet wiping the floors you're wet wiping the counters um you just can't wash yourself or anything around you and that includes laundry and 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 that goes like if you're going from caravan park to caravan park and then stopping for one night at a free camp between that that's totally understandable this is more when you want to go outside so you know <clears throat> where we currently are same thing with the toilet scenario we have to drive all the way back to broom to get water um so it's not really an, an option if i did do it it's like a four hour turnaround time well what's the point then because um we might as well just sort of go back to broom for a, for a few days so we're all often always say going to caravan parks like going to a resort for us where we can actually just have a good shower and toilet we'll have a dump point and you can just use the amenities so a bit of a downfall the old water which you know would be a common understanding if you in if you're new to this industry it might not be new to you but if, if you've been caravanning for a while you must probably understand laundry oh. works on the water now 
we can obviously run a lot of stuff off grid on our power system in this caravan like the microwave the air con the washing machine but when you do a quick cycle on the wall mounted washing machine i believe it uses 10 liters of water so you can only really fit a couple of t-shirts maybe two days worth of clothing without any jumpers or anything like that in it and you can most probably run it, it uses 10 10 liters of water and um, uses some power it actually does draw quite a bit to be fair but it's only going for 10 minutes so it's not a lot but you can only also carry certain amount of clothing with you because of weight we've spoken about weight weight always comes up and storage we we try and keep seven days worth of clothing each of each other um because you know that's sort of how long we would go for and um sometimes you will find ourselves a bit short and then you've sort of start doing the old sniff test like you would have seen we've got a lot of comments a few videos back where sue's t-shirt was inside out well that was for a reason no it wasn't it wasn't <laughs> that's also an option they say turn it inside out that was a pure yes. error um but yeah i mean there is the there's the old good old sniff test and there's the turn it inside out and you last know, but not least it, it normally doesn't really catch us out this it's just i i didn't realize how remote out here can be yeah. like it's pretty remote and like i said you have to go back to broom so yes you could most probably do a few things if you wanted to stay out here for a little bit longer so you can take the dump point you can get water you can drop your clothes in to get laundry because it's hot enough up here it is super hot up we'll here at the moment and uh, you, you hang your clothes out that's fine and get groceries water to do the dump to all that kind of stuff so this but this is a sign no one really well, we don't film it really because like we don't think i did a video once of me doing some laundry in a caravan park and got absolutely slammed for it no one wants to see <laughs> you doing your washing it's like watching it, grass grow so we said. don't really show this type of stuff this so. is as interesting as watching grass grow but you forgot one there what's that i mean it comes down to the awnies if you've got no clean awnies you go commander you go commander you that's know? the way it is. You know, today we found ourselves um, splashing around in a rock pool, which will be in the next few next few weeks episode of us up here. Um, the salt water makes you very sticky. So, yes, you must probably come back and just have to rinse yourself off with a little bit of soap quick, quick. Um, there's water. That's sort of how we how we go off grid. You know, you've got to wet yourself, turn the tap off, soap yourself, wash yourself off and get out. Otherwise, like, you ain't going to have enough water. I spend many days stepping out the shower. And that still water... That water is going to come down to the two points time but um sue are you oh, i jumped on the, i've jumped the queue here you've jumped the queue but that's all right i'll talk about the next one yep this one's really important and i just think about the days when i lived in a beautiful house with a washing machine with endless amounts of water and power because it's your linen so at home you can do your linen every three days four days once a week beautiful crisp clean linen to get into at night when you're on the road you start stretching those nights out so there's no soaking that white linen to keep it bright white um, and you're obviously you know only changing your linen once a week um, so you just yes I'm not just sleeping in dirty linen and you're See not you getting what? into bed alone oh uh, this last Sunday episode that we just done on our last episode which was Karajini we only spent like four days in Karajini and our bed linen from the red dirt if you hadn't seen it yet like the wind blew for a few days um bob was rolling around in the red dirt like well you can't stop it there's no grass anywhere that linen is basically we've washed it it's stained red and yep. our clothes as well um yep. hot tip maybe i don't know it's always nice to have some nice linen you spend a bit of money on linen but i don't know what i've learned is you do the cape hopefully going to be doing the gib very soon places like Karajini up the center i said to sue what i've learned up the cape is you just go into kmart and buy a cheap set of linen a couple of pairs of shorts each a couple of shirts each or t-shirts or whatever because that this red stuff just stains your clothing yeah, you and you know cape york destroyed some of our clothing that we just ended up having to throw it away so use it up and down and then when you sort of away from that you can sort of go and donate it to solvos you can wash it obviously and try and donate it to solvos or something like that but yeah keep the good stuff for when you're sort of cruising along the bitumen and places like that 
I'm going to hijack the next point because yep. I don't think you have any passion about this. No, nah, this is not my area no, of expertise. This is not Dirk's area of expertise. Neither is fishing. That's <laughs> what's calling on me. Hang on. There's some bugs right. around. We're getting on that for a minute. Right. Dishes. So, off grid can be a major challenge in cleaning your dishes. And I'll be the first to admit that there's a difference between dishwashing washing water at home and dishwashing water in a caravan. Sometimes I take the plates out and I think, have they come out dirtier than they went in based on the color of the dish water? Because you're saving on water, right? So there are a few hints and tips around this. You can use paper plates. But that is landfill. Yeah, look at or, Derek, conservationist Derek. Or you can burn it in a fire, but if you can't have fires, then you can't get rid of it. But, right. Um, the other thing is just wipe them down with a paper towel or a wet wipe before you wash them to get rid of most of the muck on them. Um, use a smaller bowl in the sink to use less water when you're washing up or just wait until you've got enough dishes to use the full amount of water in the sink. So I have been given a hot tip by um, one traveller. She wipes off her dishes and then she actually soaps them all and then just gives them a quick rinse. So there we go. Couple well, of hints and tips. It's hard because there's a line to be drawn. But I've always said to Sue, when we sort of out here free camping, we try not to do the big roast dinners. Oh, yeah, no. Um, the camp oven dinners as much as we want to. We, act, we we do it, but the consequences of that is like it takes a lot to clean the stuff. Yeah. Like it's oily, it's greasy. So you're running the water more and more. So we try either cook it when we're in a caravan park and we we'll just heat it up but we mm. we generally try and do the pastas and the stuff when we off grid and when we go to caravan parks um we do the big roast dinners okay. and stuff that we cook up dishes. like that so stick to the one pot there, dishes there's always a you know you can pull this side to give this side a little bit but you know people will be like oh what's the point of going caravanning off grid then if you can't really eat well you know you can i'm just saying if you struggle it's those side of the things no one really talks about is cleaning up after all those greasy cook-ups, you know? Yeah. So, or well, you can cook it in an air fryer too. That's, are we going to this page? No, we're going this page. Jeez, where are we here? Dishes. So, um, so something that <laughs> soon I always talk about, and I haven't really heard people mention this one a lot, is that, I don't actually like this topic because I don't think so, but caravans and cars are depreciating assets, realistically. I know with COVID, things held their value pretty pretty good, just to the, I think to the, due to um, the demand and yeah. availability, yeah. but I don't know how long that's going to sort of last for, but realistically, it's a depreciation asset. Um, your caravan, you'll pay $100,000 for it. You do a lap around Australia 12 months later, you might only get $85,000 for it. So you lose 15 grand. But this is where I disagree with Sue on this, but I've created those memories. I, I um, But Sue is right, it is a depreciation. Cars, they used to, you know, you buy a new car, drive it off the floor, and it's you've lost 15 grand down the road. So there's almost $30,000 you've lost, but... You do make some memories doing this, so you do. So it's it's, it's yeah, it's a opportunity tough... cost, is what Derek's yes. saying. Like, it's not it's a financial cost, but what you receive in return in terms of the experiences and the memories, you can't put a cost on that. That is financial. Well, let's talk about this. Maybe this might be a bit clearer. Like, if you were going to retire and you bought a brand new caravan and a brand new car. And this is the life that you were going to live for until hopefully, you know, you know, what, how, forever how long, like, and you got 20 years, you know, every five years to 10 years, you must probably need to look at up changing the car because of mileage, it's going to start costing you money and caravans, you might find um, it's too big or you want to downsize or you want to change it up. That's when I think it gets really dear because you can, after five years you would have lost a lot more money than 12 months and then you're trying to buy something that's more expensive than when you first thought and you can understand where the yeah. ball's rolling. So that's a side no one really talks about. Yeah. And that ties in with repairs as well. I mean, you know, your car and your caravan are moving constantly 
and when you've got rolling assets, you're pretty much, well, you have to maintain them. That's a cost. Keep rolling, rolling, yep. rolling. And um, the other thing is things go wrong. So whether it's damage from the conditions you're driving in um, or alternatively an accident, accidents unfortunately can happen as well, you can have breakages. So that's something, you know, people set off thinking the best and, you know, hoping that nothing happens to them along their travels. But at the end of the day, realistically, you've got to be prepared for if it does happen, that comes at a cost. This is another one. Look, we try to keep our cars clean. Um, we try and look after things, or at least I try and do it. Lee, um, terrible with keeping the because van clean. going back to depreciation assets, you try and look after your gear as we go along. But dust, dirt, and sand. As good as it is camping on the beach, and as good as it is coming out of the outback, um, you spend a lot of time outside, and it's uh, it's a small space. You will get a lot of dirt, sand from wind, this, that, getting into the van. Feet. Your feet, like my, oh my, if I showed you my no, feet. don't. Don't show you your feet. The red is staying my feet <laughs> out here, but I'm having a good time. Your feet are red, Bob's red, I'm just like, ah. Oh. You know, it can get quite annoying. A lot of people don't, like, you know, we always talk and show you the good stuff. Well, it is annoying when you're, when you, like, we're off grid, and I've had a swim in the ocean, I'll jump in the shower for a quick rinse, you've actually literally got to scrub your feet to get into bed. Yeah. And you've got to clean the floors and the, everything, Bob's absolutely red, we don't have the water to wash him all the time, like if I washed him tonight, he'd be dirty tomorrow. Yeah. Um, most probably, it's the same as adult, and like humans, like, yeah. but... Yeah, dust, sand and dirt is a big one, like when we're in Karajini with the wind, like you just can't get away with it. When we're on Palubi Beach, those big winds, it's hot, so you want your windows open to get a breeze, but the sand gets stuck in your blinds, it's just, it's annoying, because you you see everyone doing this and they have beautiful non-windy days and then we get there and it's just like an absolute disaster. <laughs> you just look outside and you go... This is not enjoyable. Um, so, yeah, it's it, sand, dust, dirt, and sand. It, it's going to get in. Yeah. Um, the other one is um, missing friends and family. So, this lifestyle is amazing. And look, it has to be said for everything we're talking about, we still choose to do it. So, it's not that bad. There are more positives to it than there are negatives. And we absolutely love it. But one of those things is. You're meeting great people during your travels, but you've still got family and friends at home who obviously you're not around on a daily basis. You miss them, you miss sort of major events um, because of the distance and the fact that you're constantly moving. Um, and I know a lot of people who struggle with missing family and friends who are on the road, and it's almost bizarre because you're not necessarily on the road forever, but it takes you away from your home and, and your connections during that time. Um, you know, sometimes traveling in a couple is quite interesting because you'll have one of the couple who absolutely love the travel and, you know, they've got absolutely no problem, they want to go for the next five years. You'll have the other um, partner who misses kids, misses friends, misses parents. Um, so it's always that balance and sort of negotiating that balance around how long. Well, here's an example how difficult it is for myself and Sue. Now, everybody's circumstances are different. We haven't seen our parents, uh, like, Sue has a, 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 a brother in Australia with an, and sister-in-law. I don't, I, one of my cousins have just recently moved, but pretty much don't have any um, direct, family. direct family in Australia. So, we haven't seen uh, our parents and stuff since um, COVID started, which is now almost seven, eight years later. And being able to park up a caravan and car Bob as well which is um, is our own thing to worry about not everyone will have an animal and then we have to then fly back to South Africa you ain't gonna be going back for a week or two you possibly want to go for maybe three weeks then you got to find somewhere to park this now where you just don't can't roll up to an airport with your caravan and car on the <laughs> uh, first of all I won't fit in most places 
and then so you've got to look for storage <clears throat> that becomes a cost so where am I going with this is if you were to perhaps like try and pull up in in, 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 in these towns to fly back to wherever you want to go to even in Australia for a weekend or something it's it's a so consideration, it's a consideration about those things as where you're point. gonna park look if you're gonna go for two days I suppose you just book into a caravan park and pay for your van to be on a site as such and then drive the car to the thing. If I had to park up in a caravan park for two, three weeks, that's a, that's a huge cost on my trip. There are options um, There's options, if but the nice thing about it... If you have a friend with a yeah. or if you can find storage, you yeah. know, that's a reasonable cost, but planning goes into it. Yeah. yeah. About this one, <laughs> it's got Derek's name next to it, but he doesn't want to talk about it. So, a big consideration is um, doctors and medication. So, beautiful house in Brisbane, literally five minutes from all the local conveniences the shops, the pharmacies, the doctors. So, if you need to visit the doctor for whatever reason, or if you need a script just around the corner, very different when you're on the road. If you are somebody who has sort of medical issues or needs ongoing medication, you need to really manage your treatment, care, and your scripts. So there are online options to do that. Um, you can have what they call sort of virtual um, sessions with a doctor, and you can get scripts virtually. But that's obviously not for major things. No, not for major things. Any you know, major thing, you go to an emergency yeah. room. But when you've got sort of ongoing medications, you need to manage that. On top of the script, you've got to ensure that you're in an area that has a pharmacy. So again, it's not undoable. It's just something you've really got to plan and prepare around. So I have sort of monthly medications that I need to plan around. And it can sometimes be challenging, you know, if you're a couple of days out. You've just really got to make sure that you've got that running like clockwork. Because your health and your wellness is so important. Okay, I'll stop there, love. Now... The, the possibilities are... Derek's of, just picking out the ones that he likes. He's skipping past all the other ones. This is one, <laughs> you know, maybe this is because we're not, you know, we've been living in Australia now nine years, but the chances of you coming across snakes is most probably... Good. Uh, good. Yeah. We haven't... No, we have. I have. We have, we have. I down have. in, down in, um, just outside Esperance, we were walking, and I thought it was a stick, and it was a little and two, brown snake. And in Queensland, in two days, yeah, when I was two. Walking, so, so, walking Sophie. You will most probably come across some sort of snake. Oh. Always carry a snake kit. We have a snake kit in our canopy. Snake um, Sue knows where it is. I know where it is. Um, in case something bit us, a snake will bit us or something. But... Mosquitoes, midges, and flies. Oh, now, you do love the flies. <laughs> now, we all know we're struggling over here in WA with the flies. That can be, you know, I know we talk about it a lot, but most people don't, like, really show that side where you actually sometimes feel like you can't even leave your van because it's just that uncomfortable <laughs> that you're sitting out there. You look like an off-duty police officer at a, at a traffic light when the traffic lights are out, you know. God, uh, you know, um you got mosquitoes at night. So, nice sunset, you want to sit outside, mosquitoes. Now, we, we, you know, you can put that Bushmans and that stuff on you, but, man, I'll tell you what, sometimes don't work. No. They can be that thick that makes the stay uncomfortable because now you don't want to go outside. So, you're watching the sunset through a window <laughs> and then you're back in, um, what are you laughing at? <laughs> I'm laughing at you. What? You're making it sound so tragic. It is, it, sorry, I almost used the bad word. It's terrible. <laughs> it's terrible. Um, there, you can't go out and enjoy yourself. You might have seen us or uh, Instagram, whatever. People go down here and go, oh, it's amazing. You go there and it, it can be, it just gets swarmed by mosquitoes and midges and can destroy your stay, really. All right. Are you done? You feel better? Feel better there now. There we go. All right. Okay. Travelling with dogs. So, first all of all... All animals, really, isn't it? All animals. Whether it's a dog, a bird, a cat. They're, they're all a bit different. This one's specific to dogs because it's our experience. And, look, you do have an, generally have an option. And our choice is to travel with Bob. I wouldn't have it any other way. But it does come with its challenges. So, vet care um, 
on the road can be pretty challenging because let's be honest nobody wants to go to the vet we don't plan to take the dog to the vet it generally happens and it's unexpected and you're not always in a place where care is accessible so bless Sophie um, we had an issue with Sophie when we were in far north Queensland and we had to travel four hours to get her to a vet specialist and they were like you got to get there by lunchtime so it was drop everything travel four hours to get her to the care she needs um, so just be mindful that you know it, it, it can be yeah, pretty challenging on the road the other thing is um, dirt we spoke about dirt earlier a dog and dirt you guarantee dirt in the van like I don't know if you saw Bob I'm actually looking at him he's lying up against a white wall yeah and it's making me realize how red he is like he is absolutely filthy poor thing I feel dreadful he desperately needs a bath um, but yeah you're gonna have dirt in your van and the other thing that has to be spoken about and there's this this is always this like flex in terms of do you travel with dogs don't you travel with dogs like absolutely you can travel with dogs it does take more planning and it can sometimes take more costs like national parks are not guaranteed um we've missed a number of national parks which is okay with us because i'd rather have bob 365 days a year and get into the national parks we can get into but yeah you obviously can't go into national parks which means you have to either find a pet sitter which is a planning and a cost or you pay a bit more you know to find a campsite that's dog friendly so yeah mm. that's it for traveling with dogs so yeah you know and most food. probably we had fault of, of this as well where we make these you know sunday youtube videos and we show everyone the good stuff we try a bit like it's not always that you hear and see on instagram we're all we're all most probably at fault that somehow where it doesn't always have, it's not always going to go like that not every day is going to be blue skies and smooth sailing it's insta versus reality yeah so we just thought we'll touch on those hopefully um you might have known some of those maybe you, you you weren't aware of some of those things that we we thought if you're about to start traveling or are traveling and you can even um share some stories with us that would be great um but yeah, that's it for this episode. And all in all, for all the challenges and all the dirty little secrets that no one necessarily speaks about, we still think this lifestyle is absolutely the one we will continue to choose and we will continue to do. I say that as my feet are also bright red, along with Derek's feet on red dirt on the floor with Bob being red. Um, but yeah, that's the end of the episode. And thank you so much for all of your ongoing support every week we really appreciate your views but more so your comments and your feedback and your interactions with us um, if you haven't done so before please hit the like and subscribe button for us it's um a way that we get to grow our, our channel and it's, it's hugely hugely helpful to us but other than that that's it we'll see you guys in our next episode take care and, and, and enjoy whatever you're doing see ya